Um, I'm the trail coordinator for the city of Fayetteville. We're up to about 26 miles of trails now. Um, you may have seen some of our new trail um, expansions. Uh, just recently opened in the, the spring uh, up north of the mall. There's the Clear Creek Trail, which is a really spectacular uh, scenery of the trail. If you haven't gone up there, highly recommend it. It connects up to Lake Fayetteville and goes underneath 71B. There's actually no road crossing with that one. It goes underneath the bridges. Real nice protection trail. And then also coming back down this way, uh, the MLK um, uh, extension of Frisco Trail up there through the tunnel and, and, and back around uh, finding the Walker Park. Um, that project has really opened up our ability to connect more of the south part of town to the trail. And there's some great um, black corridors uh, along streams that we plan to utilize uh, to build the trail to all them on the master plan. Um, working our way uh, down here. So I brought a map here, um, real real push here. So this this is the Frisco Trail coming into Walker Park. Uh, the big push is to connect it to the regional park as well. So we're working our way um, in phases down from through Walker Park, south of 15th Street. Uh, there's a section of trail currently under construction actually over by uh, between 71B, uh, you know where Thomas Deans was. Uh, from there, construction and it's heading back over to Green House Springs Park. That's actually going to be finished in about a month, uh, maybe a month and a half, depending on weather. Um, and then, so then these other purple sections will continue this to make a loop up to what we call the Tallahassee Trail. It's that trail, it's Cherokee Trail. It's actually part of the trail that's here, all along the old rail line. Um, so, and that's a, uh, finished also over the Razorback Road by Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Everyone knows where Chick-fil-A is, so I use that. Um, so that's why it's red on this map. Creating this nice loop. And that is what we, we just recently found out. The thing is that the Walton Family Foundation is going to provide $815,000 uh, for this construction of these trails. that will be matched by city funds. Uh, will be built by our city crews as well. So, uh, and they do a great job building those trails. In addition, coming on down to the regional park is following the Cato Spring branch. Um, this green line, and the Walton Family Foundation has helped us fund a design uh, to hire an engineer consultant to help us design this. It's got some complicated design situations because it's due to go uh, across I 49, and uh, that's just involved mm -hmm. permitting, uh, also some bridges and, and just different uh, features involved with that project. So we're going to start design and hope to have it ready for construction in 2016. So it take about a year to design it. So and we'll get going on that one. It brings it right into the regional park. Uh, also, future um, future connections to the west side of town um, will be the Rupal Road improvements, which will include a trail along the west side of that that road that will bring it all the way down to MLK, and that's right about where the snowcap is, uh, is where that comes in. And then we're proposing a trail along the south side of the MLK to come back towards I-49. That would be in front of Lowe's. Walmart there, so connecting some good destinations. And then um, the Highway Department for HGD is working on signs for that interchange. And we want to have it included, the city council has supported, including uh, bicycle facilities within their improvements on that interchange. So that'll bring it right back over to the Chalak E Trail. And then as well, we're looking at a extension of the Shiloh Trail that comes on in to the original also. So, it's going to have lots of options for some great trails. Um, just really excited to get this uh, financial contribution to, to our, our efforts. We were already you know, planning to do these trails, and this is going to accelerate the construction. And, um, and it also is going to enable us to really make some world class trails that people will include lighting as well along the trail. So, um, I guess at that point, I can just ask if there any questions that you might have. Yeah. Uh, how come, or I guess my first question is, what total amount of money are you guys expecting to be spending on trails for 2014? Um, 2014 will be basically um, from city funds. Okay. City funds, yeah, not city funds. City funds, city funds are, are $1.5 million dollars a year for trails. That's been pretty steady. It hasn't really increased. I'm going to be right about $1.5 million. That funds the trail crew, the construction crew that builds the trails.
that was funded by the Boston Cancer Foundation as well. That was 1.2 million for that. Yeah, but they spent the city about the 
they're actually the repairing corridor in that situation because we're going to have to have some free removal uh, and stream side protection you know, in, in that area that we would be in the zone. Uh, so now we're looking at actually doing signalized crossing. Uh, we're, we're right now working on a permit uh, requesting from Arkansas Highway Transportation Department, who owns 15th Street, that is the state highway 15. Um, so that we have to get their approval for to do another signal like what is on South School. It would be that same same exact design of a signal. So that's kind of what we're looking at, um, and not actually using that tunnel and just keeping the creek as is. Today. I just walked through the tunnel and looked at all of those. We're doing screen cleanup to see. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of rocks and sediment and stuff in there, so it's it's not actually eight foot tall. Yeah. Like and that. then we need to put lights in there. You know, you know, the light can hang yeah. out. In it has some challenges like that. I mean, I won't, I won't say if we can't do the signal, then we'll probably just go back to looking at that because it's a busy road and then we need to provide a safe crossing to the trail to get people into the park. So it's kind of a plan B right now, but uh, we're hoping that this signal, it, it does look like we need the warrants from the county and everything for the signal. So I think it's good. Sure. I call it the combined flow. Combined flow, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a 8 by 10 uh, double cell box culvert that 15th Street goes over right there. Uh, between Salvation Army and our storage units uh, on the south side. So, and you don't really notice this, it's kind of grown up. And when will construction begin on that section? Um, yeah, we're looking at probably at about two months. We're still kind of finalizing some easements and some permitting. Too much. The crew is currently working up at Lake Fayetteville. I just forgot to mention that, but uh, they're doing a great project to um, pull uh, people, all trail users, off of that road on the north side by the dam or in the boat dock area. But currently, it was shared, and we had some, you know, just as the use is getting so popular up there, we felt like it was a good time to like, separate that use. So, yeah, but they're they're moving along really quickly on that project, and uh, then they'll be moving down here. Couple months, really, two months. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to envision the uh, trail to the great house. Is it utilizing that uh, old railroad back then? No, um, we are looking at the Cato Spring uh, Trail utilizing some of that old base okay. uh, and possibly the bridge. There's an old trestle bridge there. Um, we haven't worked, we haven't really talked to the university yet there, the owners of that. Um, they have a road proposed somewhere in that area at some point, so we need to coordinate where that proximity of that road is going to be. But it would be cool to use that for sure if you can. Um, that's a little bit south of Breakout Park. Not much. Hmm. Not much. Not much, yeah. yeah. So the trail, it would, come, it would just come up, and then, and then I'm showing it following along here right now. It would be great to do it like that. And, and we did, we have experience with, with fixing a trestle. With on the solid E trail by Mill Place Apartments. That's one that we just finished. And put new decking on it and poured a concrete top on it. that bridge. It's a really nice way to go and save this from having to do. You know, really, we didn't have to go in the creek at all since that bridge had been there in 100 years. So that railway right maintenance runs all the way from uh, South School over to South School. Uh -huh. They have said for sure that the, the South School section, they're going to be putting buildings and different things along there. So that's why we went ahead and moved closer to the creek. Um, and, then, and they donated all of that property for us. So. And it makes a nice place for the trail. Okay, thank you, Matt. Yeah, that's a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
program at our fire and flame, which is under a great Renaissance at Rogers, and uh, Russell has all been very successful. And so we'll be working uh, in this network along with the Internet has joined. Uh, but we're going to be focusing, phase one is going to focus on Jackson Avenue from uh, right where that trail uh, crossing is that we were just talking about, which is under construction uh, south of 15th Street, and then extend all the way to the library. So that will be a great corridor, building that pedestrian corridor from the south side to downtown, and implementing our 2033 plan and helping us create a totally walkable environment for our city to do. So what this is going to uh, enable us to do is to provide a lot of services to business owners along that corridor. Through this program, they will have access to free architects, interior designers, and uh, economic development consultants. So that would be available to any business owner in that corridor. And I want to be clear that this is still a voluntary program. No one is going to be forced to do anything. This is for people who want to improve their building or their business practices or their window displays. But we'll also uh, be working to integrate a lot of the exciting new things that the city is doing, like the trail expansion and the new sidewalks that are coming in next year to South School Avenue. Um, and hopefully integrating more art into the streetscape and building some gateways to our transit system. Um, and then we'll also be hosting events to bring more people down to the area and get them spending money, having a great time, and using the South School Avenue that we all we love and be proud of. Um, the board has comprised of a lot of great people in the community. There are four residents of Ward 1 that are serving on the board, Tony Gutierrez, that is here tonight. Tanisha Gift, who is uh, the director of our Urban Research Center. Jerry Bailey, who's usually here, but I don't see him tonight. And then Rob Sharp, a uh, great local architect that we all know and love. That's part of our steering committee, several other members. We meet on the third Wednesday of the month at 5.30 at the New Science School. And we are partners with the State uh, Board of the Board of Heritage and Social Action Group. Um, so our next step is we're going to be reaching out and looking for uh, nonprofit funding partnerships. And uh, we've got a few administrative tasks that we need to complete, but then we will um, be inviting the downtown network to come and give a presentation to the city council. And we'll be hosting a community input track so that everyone will have an opportunity to show us what their vision is. And then we hope to follow that up with some workshops for business owners to help them be more effective and, and enable them to better utilize the services of this program. Uh, and then moving on, uh, some of you may be aware that there was an unfortunate uh, clearing of a natural area down on Garland Avenue at Sterling Street. Um, uh, someone went in without permits and did some regrading and changed the drainage patterns, got some large trees. And so um, I just wanted to let everyone know that our city staff is watching that very closely. Um, and so we're you know, on it. Uh, we made them go and clean up the street where they were trapping all sorts of uh, debris down the street, and installed some sort of temporary erosion and sanitation control barriers, um, and extinguished all the illegal water piles that we had. So we are watching that. Um, they have not applied for any kind of permit for redevelopment, and if they don't do that within a reasonable period of time, we will require that they go to the UTE and stabilize the site for any kind of runoff or erosion in that area. Other good news to report, uh, I have talked to you before about um, our new energy improvement district here in City Fayetteville. Uh, this is part of the property assessment of energy legislation that was passed by the legislature last year. We formed the first energy improvement district here in the state. And so right now we are in the process of interviewing uh, a great firm that we hope will be able to administer this project so that we can roll out some very low interest long-term loans to help uh, property owners, um, industry, and, and uh, residential as well to have access to low interest loans, to energy improvements, uh, invest in renewable energy, and be more energy efficient. So stay tuned. Yes, and you mentioned uh, the new sidewalk next year on South School. What uh, I was taking the funding from, uh, uh, sorry, the question was uh, asked about what sidewalk should be funded for the only building in uh, 2015 on South School Avenue. I believe it's funded all the way from the to the uh, and then it's from out there. Yeah, it's from MLK up to basically where it turns into Archibald and I believe. Do you, do you, sure. I know they're working on all the way down to the city. 
Oh yeah, 15th Street. I'm sorry, I was just 15th Street all the way down. And then the mayor and I are looking for funding opportunities to rebuild the intersection at 15th and South School because of all the semi trucks that are trying to access our commerce district and then pop in that intersection. So that is definitely on the agenda. Any other questions? Comments? I don't have a question, but this is the first I've heard about it, but I'm happy to take it. Go ahead. Of course, Sarah, mm -hmm. how about 15th at Razorback? Is there any work going on, any planning for that? You know, I've been asking a lot of questions about that. I'm not on the transportation committee, so I'm kind of limited to what I can do there, but um, the barrier there is that there Would that include light as, it, as it's projected? Um, I don't know if it's a light or light. I'm hoping for roundabouts. Um, that would be clearly. Clearly, you're saying she's Razorback and uh, 15th. Jeremy, can you say that? So it's going to be because of the third, got the right um, adding signal there uh, creates a staff issue. Crossing the railroad is going to be the third one. So we have to up to almost $300,000 in the actual We've actually submitted
discussed, uh, Sarah has quite a bit of the information. The conversation has already started. But um, we just feel like that this is a, a kind of a forgotten uh, loophole or, or an area that's not defined very well in uh, terms of the city. Well, you can look at it as the city losing revenue from people who continue to take uh, the trash out. And that's, that's been going on. And uh, you have to ask questions about are they using the sewers? Uh, we don't know. So we feel like it's uh, it's more it's sort of turning. It, it has the possibility of turning into a refugee camp, and really not that far from City Hall. Well, Mr. Russell, the first thing I would say is I'm going to give you my card. At any time, if you see anything of this nature. I would like for you to give me a call immediately, and I will begin working on that. I have not heard anything about it until this very moment, but I can understand your concern. And I'd also like to invite you to come over to my backyard someday about me, and uh, let you enjoy the smells and aromas that the uh, animal control hasn't been they have not seemed to find any, uh, any problem. Right. Okay. It's not been well, identified as a problem. I can certainly, so I can I, certainly involve them as well. So but I would like to hear. Another colleague can speak as well. He really wants to grab you. Yeah, I'm Craig Proctor. I'm neighbor. What's your last name? Proctor. Proctor. Craig neighbor of Proctor. That's right. And uh, this has been a chronic, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that this is a surprise because this has been a chronic problem. I have, on occasion, over the years, I've been there for going on five years and called the police about the problem. I don't even have to give them the address. I just say, South College, oh yeah, we know the house. Have you called an alderman? Um, I, no, that's a good point. No, I guess I felt like uh, the first point of contact would thank you. First point of contact would be with the police. Now, this yeah. would be an occasion when there was there would be a fight or something that required immediate attention. Sure, I can understand that. Okay. And but you know, if you do that first, but if you don't get immediate sure. response, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Okay. 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 I will work on it. Promise you. Any uh, other? Yes. I live behind. Could you come up to the mic, please? And your sure. name? I'm Erica Wilhite. Um. The, I heard that this is a known issue, and they actually were forced to put their house on the market. And my landlord had told me this information that they were recently off, made an, someone made an offer on the house, and uh, they asked for ten thousand more. So they're they're holding. They're I mean they they 